The final version of the Countering Chinese Communist Party Drone Act did not make it to the NDAA. If you've been living under a rock for the past seven months or so, there have been ongoing tensions between Congress in regards to the potential ban of Chinese-made drones in the United States. The document, which was released late last week, and while it isn't ideal, it does at least step back and take a call for a proper security assessment instead of an all-out ban on Chinese-made drones at this time. Pilots around the United States have been lobbying against the proposed bill which would ban all Chinese-made drones from entering the United States. If the original bill were to go through, new drones from manufacturers like DJI or Autel would be banned from being imported and sold within the United States. So that basically means if you're looking for a new drone, next year you'd be kind of out of luck. Mini 5 Pro? Probably not. And the reality is that overnight, businesses across the country that rely on drones from DJI could be left scrambling to find other alternatives. And while DJI has been primarily the main target, the bill wouldn't be exclusive to them. Like I mentioned, Autel is another manufacturer that would fall problem to this. DJI has several social media posts out there and they've basically taken steps to educate the public on their position of the matter and ensure that their customer data is not being shared. But at this point, DJI isn't out of the clear. The House of Representatives will vote on a new bill this week that would give National Security Agency one year to find out if the Chinese-made drones do pose a real threat. If the National Security Agency finds out that there are significant risks to national security, we could be revisiting this conversation yet again next year but with way more angst we'll keep you posted of course so an update on the mysterious drones in New Jersey story, AKA flying airplanes maybe. We talked about this last week, but a state senator of New Jersey has just called for a suggested state of emergency following recent mass drone sightings, which I still think look like airplanes. Let's quickly get you up to speed if you missed out on last week's episode. Across the state, residents of New Jersey have reported mysterious drones flying across the night sky. Some even claiming that they've seen them the size of their car. These drones have been primarily flying at night and witnesses report seeing flashing lights on their belly, probably a lot bigger than your typical Mavic or mini-sized drone. Earlier this week, Senator John Bramick of New Jersey suggested that the state go into a temporary state of emergency, which would effectively ban all drone flights until an explanation could be found. This is starting to sound a lot more like Independence Day. Are these things aliens? Come on. What makes this situation even crazier is the fact that more than a dozen drones swarmed and followed a Coast Guard boat just off the coast of Spring Lake on Sunday night. Somewhere between 12 and 30 drones were seen stalking a 47-foot motor lifeboat occupied by the Coast Guard at extremely low altitudes above the boat. The fact that these things are starting to get closer is probably putting more people on edge about this whole thing. As tensions continue to rise over the question of who are these drones or where are they coming from and where are they doing and what do they want, government authorities are reminding citizens that they do not pose any threat to the public at the current time. We'll admit at first, we thought that this was just someone flying a fixed wing drone at night for fun or possibly marketing stunned or maybe something more like mapping, right? It could be mapping, but it might be something more serious than that. Like we, we do need to figure this out. Like why hasn't someone spoken up at this point? Come on. Today's episode is brought to you by Coastal Drone Co. That's us, your certified resource for drone training and certification. Now until Christmas, save 15% on all of our online courses by using the code HOLIDAY24 at coastaldrone.co. So if you're eyeing a new drone this holiday season, now is the perfect time to level up your skills. Our discounted courses will help you master your new gear and take your flying to the next level. So come on, act fast because you don't want to miss out on this deal. Guess what? There's another leaked drone. It looks like a Mini, it sounds like a Mini, it flies like a Mini, but now it looks like it has LiDAR. So the Mini 5 has just been dropped already and it feels like the Mini 4 Pro was only just released yesterday. Internet super sleuth Jasper Ellens has found something that looks to be a Mini 5 or at least a Mini sized drone with LiDAR on the front of the drone. And it also looks to have vented motors which means it might have a little bit better heat dissipation. We're on this crazy rapid pace right now and it's cool to see DJI bring such a premium feature like LiDAR to its budget models. We first saw it on the Air 3S this year, so it'd be something that's nice to have better low light obstacle avoidance capability. We do have a full video about the Air 3S and we talk about why we didn't buy one personally. Go check that out, obviously on the channel button link. It's probably up here. So even though this is just a leak and very early at best, what more could DJI add to what is essentially their best budget semi-professional micro drone at this point? What would make you dump everything else and get the Mini 5 Pro tomorrow if it came out? If you literally just 
bought a Mini 4 Pro on Black Friday sales, don't fret. You bought an excellent drone. You made a good purchase. That is the best of the best when it comes to minis and micros right now. Whatever this drone is, it's probably not gonna come out until Q2 2025, maybe even the shopping season in the fall. So don't freak out, right? You've got a good opportunity to get out there and fly with what you've got. Ever since they released the original back in 2019, the Mini has quickly become one of the most popular drones on the market. And seriously, like that's almost you'll ever see people flying these days. A lot of people only fly micro drones. And even though you don't need a pilot certificate to fly a micro drone, there are still a few things that you need to be aware of to fly safely and legally. So check out our micro drone course. Link is over here if you wanna find more. Actually, the link's gonna be down here. A Chinese citizen has been arrested by the FBI following a recent drone flight over a Starlink rocket launch. That just sounds like a bit of a recipe for legal disaster for this person. 39-year-old took off from a public park which faces adjacent to Vandenberg Space Force Base in Santa Barbara on November 30th. What kind of drone is he flying? It was a DJI Mavic 2, which was used to take photos of the Falcon 9 rocket as it was taking off, as well as get some overview shots of the layout of the Space Space Force base. After about an hour of flight time, the drone had flown around the third and fourth complex of the base, which was where the rocket was being stored. Upon noticing the drone, authorities quickly sent out an investigative team to the park to find out who was the pilot and where they were. Upon confronting Zhu, he initially stated that he saw the drone, however, he was not the pilot in command, and the authorities later found the drone inside his jacket pocket. The plot thickens. The FBI interviewed him and found out that he actually did admit to taking photos of the launch on that day and that he used special software to bypass DJI's no-fly zone locking restrictions. He was then arrested at the San Francisco Nation Airport on Monday and charged for violating national airspace laws and for failing to register his Mavic 2 with the FAA. The real kicker is the fact that he faces up to four years in prison. Remember, failing to comply with the FAA can lead to some serious consequences, and not only that, flying drones near an aircraft of this size can obviously be very dangerous to not only the rocket, but the drone obviously itself. To legally perform an operation like this, you need to plan it months in advance and apply for some sort of special waiver to go through a ton of hoops to be able to get this approved. We've got a whole video that dives into what the process is like to get a Canadian SFOC. So if you're interested, check that out up here. Researchers out of the University of South Australia have developed a unique navigation system for drones that completely eliminates the need for GPS. We're talking about celestial navigation here. Stars. We're talking about stars. Scientists within the university have created a unique solution to allow drones to gauge their position using star patterns. With the use of celestial navigation, they're able to offer a solution that's not only lighter in weight, but also more cost effective, and it's going to be something that's not subject to a GPS denied environment. So it's a win-win for everyone. In a state to space.com, Chow, a scientist at the university, emphasized that the technology could hold big benefits for remote applications where GPS data is not accurate or really available. One practical application benefit of going purely on celestial navigation is that these drones will be able to handle a potential jamming attack from an opposed force. In the past, this technology has only been available on manned aircraft and often came at a pretty hefty penny in both cost and in weight. These things were huge, so it's super cool to see a version of this in the drone space. Maybe we'll see this on the Mini 7 Pro? Probably not. This is, this is kind of a military application is what we're seeing this technology based on. While it's still in development, the researchers did conduct a test flight with a fixed wing aircraft and they were able to nail it down to a four kilometer level of accuracy, which is pretty good. What did Copernicus use? Like what was his positional accuracy? So that's it for this week. Be sure to catch our podcast this Sunday at 10 a.m. where we'll be talking with Arden Shibley from Yellow House Aerial about the use of drones for cinematography. Arden used to fly the Freefly Alta X and he actually sold all that and moved down to the, well, down, moved across to the DJI Inspire 3. So we talked to him about why he did it, what the pluses and minuses of that have been. It's really cool and he's a film industry pilot, so you want to check it out. If you want to see another pilot that we've talked to recently, check out last week's episode on drones for live video production using consumer hardware and how Matt Matthews of Blackhawk Aeronautical uses them to live stream music events, sporting events, everything. So last week's episode's live right now. Check it out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We really appreciate it. We've seen our audience grow a lot and we really appreciate you tuning into this every week. So we'll see you next week for the same.